Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is testing pressure switches. So this right here happens to be a variable speed inducer motor with a variable speed gas valve. So this tool right here, you can actually use to isolate a pressure switch off of the system. So if you suspect a, a pressure switch being a problem, uh, and you have pressure switch error codes, and you've checked the condensate lines, and you've checked for blockages in the exhaust, and you know the inducer motor is running, you can use a tool just like this in order to uh, disconnect the electrical wires off of the pressure switch after you have the power off. And then you can connect the sensors to this pressure tester. This is the Fieldpiece SDMN6, and it has a built-in pump inside. So it'll actually replicate the inducer motor's negative uh, water column pressure. There's three pressure switches on this one. This one's a medium, this one's a low, and then there's one behind it, and that's for high speed. So there's three different types. There's actually one coming in right here, just one tube, and it goes through each pressure switch uh, and, and goes to the, to the last one. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and disconnect that tube right here. And we are going to go ahead and connect this meter. But before we do that, I just want to show you how this is connected. You have the pressure one attached right here, and then you have a pump, okay? You have both of those hoses getting connected into this fitting, and then you have this end right here. This is the end that we're going to put into here, but first we're going to turn this uh, pump on and let it start up. The electrical connections are right here, right here and here for the uh, sensor testing. It's going to tell us if this switch is open or closed. And most pressure switches are normally open, which means that the electrical contacts are apart. When it reads the negative pressure that's on the pressure switch, then it's going to go ahead and close the electrical contacts. This one right here is 0.85 inch water column. It's 27.6 water column to 1 psi. So it's very, very low negative pressure that this is reading. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on now. And we're going to zero it out. You see it says 0 0.02 inch water column. We're going to zero it out. You just hold the zero button. The arrow's on P1. And now we're going to get the pump running. So you press test. Make sure that this end isn't blocked up or anything. And we're going to wait till it counts down. just about there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put that onto the pressure switch. And this right here says, it says closed, and there'll be a light there when this switch is closed. All right, right now the light is not lit, it's not closed, and our pump is reading 0.16 inch water column. So we're reading the, the pressure and we are pumping negative pressure as well. See, it says negative right there. So since we got to get up to at least 0.85 in order for this pressure switch to close, we're going to press the up arrow. It's going to say increase. And if we hold this button, it's going to increase rapidly. Also, the pump is going to try to a lot of times catch up. So after you let go of the button, a lot of times it's still increasing the, uh, the pump pressure. So I don't want to overdo it. So we're still increasing. I'll hold it in a little longer this time. You see it's going to start flashing very rapidly. Now we're up to negative 0.6 inch water column. You see the switch did, still did not close yet. Alright, we're up at 0.72. This tool is a very nice tool uh, just for if you have some type of an intermittent problem with a pressure switch. You can basically isolate, disconnect that pressure switch from the system. So you know if that pressure switch is definitely working, then that's not the problem. A lot of times pressure switches get misdiagnosed. Uh, I would say probably about 9 out of 10 times they get misdiagnosed. Um, but uh, most of the time it's the condensate drain. All right, we're at 0.86 in negative inch water column. 
sometimes they do go bad, but it's just not as often um, as you see them getting replaced. Okay, so there you go. There's the, the light is now lit, and you see that the pressure switch is electrically closed. The contacts are closed now. All right, so it said 0.85. It closed at a right around uh, 0.89 or so. Now we can actually decrease the pressure, and we're going to go down. If humidity gets into these pressure switches, it'll it'll mess it up. Any type of like water, um, there's usually like a rubber diaphragm in there, and that can kind of get stuck if there, if water had gotten in there. Sometimes the the diaphragm itself cracks, and it no longer is able to seal up in order to um, open and close contacts. Okay, so now you see at 0.83 when we were decreasing the pressure, the switch opened back up again. So that switch is good. Okay, now let's move on to the lower switch. Once again, the power is off. You want to make sure that you know which wires go where on this. On this particular furnace, since it's a variable speed and it has multiple pressure switches, it wants to know if it's the if it's the high or the medium or the low. Uh, speed pressure switch that's actually at fault right there. So each each set of wires are directly connected to the control board. They don't go in series through these pressure switches. Other other furnaces uh, that have maybe two pressure switches, a lot of times they will go in series. But on this one, since it's a variable speed, which the pressure switches are replicating a multi-speed because there's a, a low, medium, and high, these are just going directly to the board. All right, so we just leave our tube on here since the pressure tube normally gets connected to there and it goes through all the pressure switches. This one is 0.60 water column. So we see that we're already closed, which that's already a good sign. And we're going to go ahead and decrease. I just wanted to show you how this instrument worked, how how to test pressure switches if, if you were uh, concerned maybe about a misdiagnosis or something. This tool is a, is a very good one uh, to use. Okay, so there you go. At 0.6, when we were decreasing, the pressure switch opened. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and turn it up, and it's going to go ahead and close. So both of those pressure switches are good. I'm not going to bother uh, testing the back right now. What I do want to say, though, is, you know, to get to the back, we might not be able to get to the electric connections very easily. So if you want to take these two screws out, you can and pull this pressure switch out. But the thing is, you want to hold the pressure switch like this. I know this is an older one, but you want to hold it like this and not like this. All right. So if you have the pressure switch out and you're testing it, you want to hold it like that because there's a spring inside. And then the weight of the diaphragm inside, you don't want to um, uh, have it have to deal with extra weight, you know, with the, with with the pressure. All right, so that's how you use this tool. So these ones say exactly what they should be on them. This one, for instance, does not say. All right, there is no um, negative pressure reading on it in water column. It just has a model number, so you could look that up. This type of pressure switch has normally open and closed contacts. These ones right here are normally open. These are closed. Once it gets the negative pressure it needs, this normally open will close, and this normally closed will open up. Okay. So let's just uh, put the tool on this real quick and see what pressure will take to uh, to close these contacts. So we're going to have to. put our electrical sensor wires on and you see that we are closed right now when we disconnected we went up to 2.2 inch water column but we need to uh, we need to go down Our pump is still trying to catch up. We're going down 0.67 right now, inch water column, and we're still going down. 
0.57 inch water column. Pump seems to be just about caught up, but we're still decreasing. Let's go down a little bit more. The switch is still closed. Oh, and there you go. So now this switch has now opened up. So we know that this switch will open right around 0.48. And if we increase it, and now we see that it closes. So if, if we turn this pump off now, just hit the test button. If we take this tube off, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the pump and we can just use this one hose right here. We attach this to the inducer motor, um, basically where the hose is connecting into the pressure switch at, or you can actually take this off completely and just take that hose right here okay, and put it on like this. And if, if the negative pressure is higher than, than what this is, meaning if, it's, if this closes the contacts at, say, 0.5, and our inducer motor is pulling, say, uh, one inch water column, you know, it's both in the negative, then we know that our pressure switch is good, okay? It's opening and closing on the contacts, and the inducer motor is pulling uh, a negative inch water column value that's significantly higher than the pressure switch itself. But there could be some other type of problem uh, that is out there, like like I said, maybe a condensate, um, condensate line that is not draining very well. And you got to remember, as this thing runs, the condensate line is filling back up again, uh, and the condensate trap is filling back up. And if there's a problem with not being able to drain, it's going to work intermittently, all right? And then it's going to throw a pressure switch error, error code on you, all right? So you got to make sure that that condensate line is pitched properly, has a quarter inch of pitch per foot going away from the unit, and, uh, and it is draining properly and the tubes are not clogged. Um, you also want to make sure that the inducer motor itself is, is working sufficiently, all right? And that the exhaust is getting pushed out of the building and and that there's no clog in either the intake pipe or the exhaust pipe all right also you want to make sure if uh, you have something wrong with maybe your heat exchanger uh, maybe there's a crack in it that can be an issue as well but that's how you do it hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at ec service tech channel